had to wait to start recording because uh, some b-boys are setting up over there and they're blasting DMX and I'd get a copyright strike for that. <laughs> yeah. I like DMX man he seemed like he was a he seemed like one of the good guys I don't know if he was I mean I never checked his early life but he probably wasn't but I like to think some of them are you know whatever I talk a lot about um or I use that a lot the uh, Da Vinci quote uh, some will see some will see you in shown and some will not see and um, it works on a spectrum you know like everyone can kind of be a little bit of everything of every one of those separate things like I have a, a friend that comes to the channel and he has a lot of good uh, comments on stuff and adds to things. His name is JCIA. And he'll occasionally send me um, clips from my videos. And he'll point out things that get picked up in the background. That uh, the camera picks up. But that you don't see with the naked eye. Uh, that guy Roger and Casey who I talk about a lot. He's the master of this. Um, he can lay down these uh, these photographs and he goes through them using different uh, tools um, photography tools and he can like whatever you turn up the gain or you turn down this and you can different things appear and he'll outline them with the pen you know show where they are uh, sometimes I can see that stuff sometimes I can't so my friend Jay will send me um clips you know from it from videos i made with uh little sections like hey did you can you see this and a lot of times i can't and um he's always telling me about these birds i have around me like uh in a lot of my pictures and a lot of the videos uh these birds always show up he sees them around him too but i guess they're I got a bunch of them around me. I'm gonna cut through the, the mall here. Uh oh, it's a, uh, some kind of farmer's market situation. Maybe we won't go through the mall. It's gonna be too congested in there with this thing going on. But uh, yeah, so, he'd send me these pictures and sometimes I see stuff. Sometimes I see things that, that he doesn't see or that he didn't point out. And um, yeah, some people just have a knack for that. But he's always talking about these birds and uh, wasn't seeing them, you know. And then one day he sent a, a picture from his, I think it was his, either his house or his work or something. And it was like a window that looked like it had condensation on it. And, the, um, and in the window, uh, I saw them. Birds. Three, three blackbirds, like flying together. I, they were, I mean, I just saw them, it was there, and it's not like, it's not a shadow, it's not like a, an art, like a picture, like an art picture, it's like, um, it's hard to explain, it's in the, it's in the photograph, but it's almost like one of those, those eye exercise things, like those eye trick things, where if you stare at something, and then you look away, you can see something different, it's sort of like that, like it, it shows up to you in that way. And I saw them. And then once I saw them once, I can see them now in almost everything. Uh, they're blackbirds. They're small. Um, and there's usually like a bunch of them together. You know, anywhere from three to five or six or seven. Flying or, or sitting together, you know. So I, uh, I didn't know what the spiritual significance of that would be so I, I just did a normie search on it and I found that uh, the blackbird has spiritual significance as a spirit animal it's they're supposed to be protecting you spiritually I'm not really up on the whole spirit animal thing I mean there's I try to 
I try to know a little bit about everything, but I don't I don't know much about the spirit animal situation. But um yeah, I thought that was interesting and what it reminded me was the saying that I say like a mantra all the time. Some will see, some will see when shown, some will not see. This was a case of I didn't see it until he showed me. And then I saw it. So I think if someone has divinity or is part of the shared consciousness or has some God juice in them, uh, they can see. It's the scales on the eyes. It's how scaled your eyes are. The scales work with the bales. The bales and scales, scales bro. Uh, this is a Honolulu eight point turn. Oh, okay, it wasn't. I thought you were gonna see a Honolulu eight point turn. I picked a couple up before. I got one in my garage one day, a good Honolulu eight point turn. Yeah, it's uh This is a wild place, man. That's all I can really say. <laughs> it's a fucking wild place. Wow. But uh yeah, so I mean you can you will see you can see some things it just takes a while or you have to be shown like that there's a spectrum there just because you can see some things doesn't mean you can see everything and sometimes when someone shows you something you might not see it right away like me with the birds eventually i did and now i see them in the pictures when he shows me you know and um i've been picking up other things in the pictures so usually it's like he'll say check this out and I think he's seeing one thing and I'm seeing another. The other day, he got this thing. It was over by his house and it looked like a fucking, like an orange lizard, like a Komodo dragon was on a, a power line. But like it wasn't. It just looked like it was. It's really weird how some of this stuff works. Because in a, in a photo, or if you're using video, it picks up frequencies that you um that you can't see with the naked eye we can only see so many dimensions like a bee can see many more than we can it, it, they can see much better dimensionally they can see more frequency uh roger from kc on his channel has this is it in kc it's in kc i wonder how he's doing i haven't seen him upload anything for a while i hope he's okay i know they were uh he had some spiritual harassment stuff going on, or at least that appeared to be what was happening a couple years ago. Uh, I don't like asking people about that though. I, I think I might have. But that's like, you know, that's a touchy thing. It happens to all of us, you know? But sometimes I think if you talk too much about it, you kind of let them know what you know, you know? <laughs> it's fucking weird, but at least that's how it feels, you know. So anyway, he has this video. It's still up on his channel. And I um, I downloaded it myself in case uh, he goes away or it goes away. And it's this homeless guy on a bus. Or, or um, yeah, it's a, it's a bus or a train, whatever. Public transport. And there's a guy filming him. Um, because he was sitting in his chair just kind of freaking out kind of talking to the sky and like so the guy was filming him and when he looks back at the video and you could see the video there are these uh two beings around him there's one sitting next to him on the uh i'll link the video in, in the in the description under here there's one looking out the window next to him and there's one right behind his shoulder but he's sitting behind him, but there's nowhere to sit because the guy is in the last seat and the back of the, the train or the bus is right at his back. So even though there's no room for this guy, he's there. And they're white, humanoid-shaped beings with coal black eyes. Um, but they're, they're not here, of course. And it reminded me a little bit of when I saw into the, on the solstice I, I had a video about, it's called Demons, and I talked about the first, uh, really the only time I saw a demon in their own dimensional space, I guess. 
where I could where they looked solid. Normally demons uh, they can't be solid here because they have no form. The way the only way you can interact with them is when they jump into a body. And I was just talking about last night, or just the night before, whatever, about how I had a conversation with I think it was one or two specific demons that were in six bodies over two days. Uh, they continue this sort of conversation with me. Or it was more like um, a, a taunt. They're more taunting me. It sounds schizo, I know, but hey, you know, whatever. I just sometimes you just have to say, hey, this is what happened. But uh, yeah, so in the video, you can see that he's being tormented by these things. I mean, not poking him in the eye or anything, but you can see that's what he's reacting to, you know? So, these things are around us all the time. Uh, yeah. Everywhere. Yeah, I might move to California. Some are, in fact, are, I theorize you have one on board with you at all times because they wouldn't leave anything to chance. And if they can do it, and again, they is whoever, whatever, the opposing force, uh, the dark force, Satan, whatever, the, the bad, team bad. If they have the ability to do something, you have to take the bat black on it. Like if there's a 1% chance that it's a possibility, then you have to take it as an absolute certainty. Especially when it comes to that, because if they had, if they can control those kind of levers, uh, and they can, they would have them pegged to 11 all the time to maximize the torture, to get the most uh, juice out of us, keep us in a lower vibrational frequency. The lower they can go, the more they can digest. They can't digest high frequency. Or not even high frequency, but if it's above a certain, certain frequency. I have a chart somewhere that I posted a couple times that shows the different levels, uh, which one is lower than the other being sadness depression um i don't know how accurate it is i think it's just someone's idea of it but it's, it's one i kind of go by because it, i think it's probably fairly close again you don't know i mean you have to kind of let this stuff pass the spiritual shit test uh it's something you feel that you can't really explain it's beyond logic uh it's beyond the gut instinct it's exists somewhere between those two things, your gut and your logic, where you can look at something and be like, oh yeah, this is, this passes muster, or no, I think this is bullshit. Now I'm sure that's something that could be honed over time, and I think that that should be the goal to do so, or one of the goals. The party over there. <laughs> it's funny, like when I first moved into our building, I was like, oh, there's a pool up there, huh? And I'm like, that's cool. I'm not a pool type guy. I wouldn't go there anyway. But uh, when I got to the gate to look in there, the pool is the size of a bathtub. It's hilarious. Because right over here, this outcropping. Outcropping. I don't know if you call it an outcropping. But this wall is down here. The white wall with the bushes in front of it. That's the pool. I'm like, oh, cool, a pool. And then you go up the door and you look in and it's like a... It's like a jacuzzi-sized swimming pool. It's pretty funny. But yeah. Sometimes, uh... It takes a while to see stuff. But you should always keep trying to look, you know? <laughs> Don't blame the teacher. Blame the school.